Matthew 25. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Matthew 25. We're going to begin in verse 1. The, the parable of the ten virgins. Hallelujah. While you turn there. Father, we turn to you, Lord, and we give you praise. We know that we can do nothing on our own. That it, we are in need of the Holy Spirit. We are in need of you. And I ask you, Lord, this morning that you would anoint my words. Give me the words to preach. I pray, Father, that you would establish every word, that it would rightly divide the word of truth. And Lord, it is impossible for us to understand your word without your Holy Spirit revealing it. And so I ask that you would open up our hearts and ears that we might understand and receive the word of truth. We bind the enemy away that would seek to pervert, and that would seek to steal. We command him to be gone in the mighty name of Jesus. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Matthew, the 25th chapter, the parable of the ten virgins. This parable that Jesus gives, he likens the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, unto ten virgins. What I want to give to you this morning is the, the gist of what Jesus is trying to instill within our heart pertaining to the church. He says in verse 1, The kingdom of heaven is like ten virgins, which took their lamps, and they went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise, and five were foolish. These ten virgins all symbolize, in essence, the church. The Bible would teach us that the church is the bride of Christ. Jesus is the husbandman. And each one of them have a lamp. And the lamp is the illumination. It is the, 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 the ability for us to be able to have light. It is the source of light. Without the lamp, there could be no light. And all ten of them have a lamp. And it says that those that were foolish, in verse 3, took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. The oil symbolizes the power source. It symbolizes the Holy Spirit. We can do nothing without the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I must go unto my Father so that the Holy Spirit can come. We cannot live this Christian life. We cannot be the bride without the Holy Ghost. He, we need the oil. He tells us, the bridegroom tarried, and Jesus ascended up into heavens 2,000 years ago. So he certainly has tarried. And we are, for 2,000 years, lived in the age of grace, <coughs> waiting for the return of our Savior. And the grace of God has been given like never before for the people to repent of their sins and accept salvation through the only salvation that has been given, the cross of Jesus Christ. He has tarried. And so it says they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made. This symbolizes the rapture. This symbolizes the return of Jesus Christ. Yes. And the, the, the cry said, Behold, the bridegroom comes. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil, for our lamps have gone out. But the wise answer, not so, lest there not be enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went out to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready, amen, they that were ready, went in unto him, to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know not neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man comes. This parable that Jesus gives pertaining to us, pertaining to me and to you, is he tells us that there are ten virgins, and they're all virgins. They all have the appearance of being right before God. They all have the appearance 
of walking as the bride ought to walk. Except five of them are foolish and five of them are wise. They each have a lamp. They're each holding a lamp. And to the, to the natural eye, they all look the same. They're all waiting. They're all talking the same talk. They're all holding the lamp. But because the bridegroom tarried, he did not come immediately. There needed to be, have the patience of enduring. And because the, the wise took oil, which symbolized the Holy Spirit within them, the power of the Holy Ghost, the source of the power, yes. it says the other, the foolish, didn't have it. And it gives to us the idea that in the church world today, I talk a lot about the remnant. Because the remnant, the meaning of remnant is that which, is, that which remains. It has been that which is left over from the original. And there is a remnant. The Bible would tell us that Elijah had thought he was the only man of God. And when he saw Jezebel and he saw Ahab and the wickedness that was going on, he thought he was the only man of God. And he, he said, well, it was me. I wish I was just dead because Jezebel wants my head. And, and it isn't. And God said and rebuked him and said, I have 7,000 prophets that have not bowed the knee to Baal. I have a remnant that you don't even know about. And I can tell that even within the last two years or so, you can tell that there is a remnant out there that is greater than before. Because it used to be when you started to talk about Jesus, even in the church, people didn't really even understand what you were talking about. Churchgoers. When you started to talk about a remnant of people, a, a, a people that came out from among the world and was separate, you realize that your speech sounded a little vague to them. But now it's not so much. There is a remnant that has not bowed the knee to Baal that is out there. And it is a, a, a remnant, which means it's, it's a small number compared to the big part. But there's a remnant that has not bowed down to the world, to the Jezebel spirit, has not bowed down to the Antichrist and that which is not of Christ. And it says here that five of them were foolish and five were wise. The wise had the Holy Ghost within them, the power of illumination, the power of truth that was within them to light the way. The Bible says the Word of God is a lamp unto our feet. It will guide us in the right way. It will direct us into the will of God. It illuminates us. The power of the Holy Ghost is within us. And it will give us discernment to judge between that which is good and wrong, the clean, the unclean, the righteous and the unrighteous. That's the power of the oil. But it says, that if, if you look here, it says that uh, the, the, at midnight there was a cry made. It says, Behold, the bridegroom comes. Go ye out to meet him. Okay? Then all those virgins arose, and it says they trimmed their lamps. Now listen, they trimmed their lamps. Means that the five that were foolish did like what the, the wise were doing. They sat down and they began to do the same process to to trim the lamps to get ready. But you understand, it did no good. The trimming of it did no good because they did not have any oil in it. Are you hearing me this morning? Without the oil, the trimming of the lamp will do no good. And how many of you know there's a lot in the world today that are going through the rituals of trimming a lamp? But it brings no... No good light. It does not bring forth anything of power because they have no oil in the lamp. What do you do that they're trimming the lamps? They have no oil. And there's a lot of people who do things in the church today with, with an effort that has a form of godliness, but it says they deny the power thereof. And it says from such turn away. If it does not have the power of Jesus Christ, if it does not have the oil and the, the anointing of the Holy Ghost, it will do no good. Because it is not illuminated with the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. So they're going through their rituals, their, 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 their trimmings of the, of the lamp. But they had no power. And so they said to the, the wise, give us your oil. But you see, the anointing of God, the power of God is not transferred from people to people. There are people who think it is because they take Elijah... And that Elisha received a double portion of the anointing of Elijah, if you remember this. But you see, if you read the account, Elijah tells Elisha when he asks for a double portion, Elijah says, that's a hard thing to ask of me. 
Because Elijah knows it ain't his anointing to give. It ain't his oil to transfer to Elisha. So what Elijah says is, it's a hard thing that you've asked. If God will permit it, because it's God that does the anointing, it's God that does the, that gives the oil. He says, if you see me go, then God will grant your wish. But if not, then it won't be so. So it, it, it in fact, if we will read the account, would give us the truth that Elijah couldn't transfer his anointing to Elisha. It was if God would transfer it, if God would give you a double portion, then it will be yours. And of course, Elijah went up in a fiery chariot and Elisha saw it. And Elisha received a double portion of the anointing that Elijah had. But it was not Elijah that gave the anointing. Amen. And so when they said to the, to the wise, give us your oil, they said, we ain't got the power to give it to you. You got to go to the source, those that give the oil. And you got to go get it yourself. And so I can't give you the anointing because it ain't mine. I got to only get it from Jesus. I go to him and I get the anointing directly from him. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the anointing, the oil yes. that comes from God. And that's what you have to do. If we're going to be wise in our waiting for God, we got to seek him and have the anointing and the power of illumination of, of the light in our lamps that we can see what's really going on around us. And I got to tell you, I believe this with all my heart. You might think I'm, 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 I'm out there, but I don't think I am. There are many today within the church that are living in a dark closet. They're living without an, a, a, a lit lamp. And they're going through the trimmings. They're going through the rituals. But there's no power in their heart. There's no power of the Holy Ghost within them. Because they're not seeking Him. They're seeking men. And I, it's all over on the television. There's men on television that will tell you, you join forces with me and I'll give you anointing. You join forces with me and I'll give you this. You give me money and, I'll, and, and God will give you double back. Well, it ain't theirs to give. That's right. And if they have any, uh, any anointing at all, they would be preaching Jesus Christ and Him crucified, pointing everyone to Him and not trying to gather a, a crowd for themselves. Amen? We are the witnesses of Jesus Christ. We preach Him. We don't preach our own gospel because we ain't got nothing. Anything we got is from Him. And that's the source we go through. It says again in verse 9, The wise answered, Not so, that there will be not enough for us, but you go yourself and get the anointing. You go yourself and get the oil. So while they left, because they weren't ready, that's right. Jesus came. And it says that those that were ready went in. Years ago, I was, I guess I was 17 years old. I was preaching at a church. And uh, I guess there was maybe 100 people there at the time. And I was preaching and I said these words. I said, there's coming a day when the mercy of God is going to end. And when I said it, immediately I felt everybody prickle up. And the pastor's wife was sitting over yonder, and she gave me the horrible, dirty look. And as soon as I seen it, I instantly thought, whoop, I said something wrong. I'm 17 years old at the time. I thought, I said something wrong. And as soon as I thought that, I remember Lamentations, and it says, the mercy of God endures forever. And I thought, okay, that, that was a mess up by me, and I started to backpedal out of it. Well, see, when I got home, I sought the Lord then, and I said, Father... Shame on me if I just said something wrong in front of a hundred people. And, but for some reason, I felt like that was you that, that was wanting me to say that. And the Lord was starting, I was just starting to preach at the time. And the Lord was training my ear to hear his voice still, which we're always in training. Amen. Amen. And he answered my prayer. Because it says here, the door was shut. And the gist that the Holy Spirit was trying to tell me and that I was trying to tell the people that I didn't understand fully was there is coming an end to the age of grace. The mercy of God is blown out full and wide. The door is wide open. And it has been for 2,000 years that whosoever will come and repent of their sins and accept Jesus Christ, they will be saved. Yes. But that door is going to be shut. And the moment it's shut, it will be too late. There will come a time where the, the end 
of His mercies and His grace and His continuation to, to forbear will be over. And the door shut. And it says afterward in verse 11, the five virgins that were fools said, Lord, Lord, open unto us. But He said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. And the Bible says in that day many will say to the Lord, 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 didn't we prophesy in your name? We cast out devils in your name. We did this and that in your name. And Jesus will reply, I never knew you. Does the Jesus know us this morning? And I know we think to ourselves, of course, he knows everybody. But we can see from the scriptures that he says, I never knew you. We've got to know Jesus personally. I've said this before, and I'm, I'm about wrapping this up, but I've said this before. I know the president of the United States. I know his name. I know what he looks like. I know I could Google some things about him and give you some things that, I, that, I, that I've learned about him. But I've never met him. I've never talked to him. I don't know him. And he certainly don't know me. But yet, I know him, in essence. And I, I'm, I'm afraid there's many unwise, foolish virgins within the church holding their lamp and they say, I know God. I know what His Bible says. And of course He knows me. But the truth is, the oil has gone out in their lamps and they're in a dark, blinded prison and they don't even know it. And because there is not the oil of the anointing, the, the oil of the Holy Spirit to illuminate their way, their lamp has gone out and they're living in a spiritual darkness and God does not even know them. What a horrible thing to hear the Lord say, I never knew you. So he says, watch therefore, for you don't know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man will come. Jesus could come back today. Do we have our, our lamps filled with oil and shining bright? Is our way being illuminated by the word of truth? There is a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof is death. And there's many foolish virgins who think they're, they know the right way, but it's not the Word of God. They don't have the oil of illumination within them of the Holy Spirit. Their lamp has gone out, and the end thereof is death. This parable that Jesus gives of the ten virgins, five fools and five wise, he gives it because there is a remnant. There is those that will hold true to the original apostolic teachings of the Word of God, that which the original apostles taught, and I won't detour from it. I won't give in to what these other people say. It's been said, and it ought to be so. A pastor better be able to stand upon the Word of God and not be bought. And if he is able to be bought, he is no more than a spiritual prostitute. And I know that sounds a little rough to some of us, but that's the truth. If he is willing to be bought and preach only what the people want to hear, then he is a spiritual prostitute. The, a man of God better stick to what the Word of God says, know it, and not be able to be bought by money, by fame, by a pat on the back, or by a few kind words. There's one that we must seek, and it's the pleasure of knowing Him. I want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. And that's who I'm seeking to please. Amen? I want to encourage you this morning to examine your heart. Is there oil in your lamp? Is there oil in your lamp? If you bow your heart with me.